Is this mini PC, this tiny little thing, the perfect apartment media PC? As someone who has now been an apartment dweller for two years as of this week and has always struggled to find a good bedroom media streaming setup, I think this may very well be the one for me. This video is sponsored by Azul. They sent out this awesome little PC for review to see what I can do with it, but everything you're about to hear is my own and no one's seeing this review before it is posted or anything like that. So this is Azul's new Byte 3 mini PC. It's been updated to the new Intel Apollo Lake N3450 processor. That's four cores, but no hyper-threading. So still just four threads and four gigs of RAM, although they do have an eight gigabyte model. They've got 32 gigabytes of eMMC onboard storage, and it comes with Windows 10 Pro. So far, this isn't anything special for a bedroom PC, eh? Well, the cool part comes in its connectivity. So you already have some decent specs for media streaming and such, but inside you have an M.2 SATA SSD slot for the 2280 size uh, for super slim, super, wow, words are hard today, super slim storage, and they even include thermal pads and a nice little heat sink to keep this, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, totally fanless PC, nice and cool and quiet, and it's kind of cool. Now, when you take off the bottom of the, of the chassis here to install a SSD there are two screws in the middle that look very similar to the outer corner screws you do not want to unscrew these these mount the heat sink and if you take it off it will be very hard to put it back together without attaching it direct to the plate so leave those two middle ones alone just unscrew the four corners and you have access to the insides easy peasy so not only can you throw in the m.2 SSD with the nice little heat sink but it also already has the power and SATA hookups ran so that you can hook up a two and a half inch SATA SSD as well well, you can fill it with terabytes of storage if you have the money. But it doesn't stop there. On the outside, you have three USB 3.0 ports. Two on the back, one on the side. Then there's a USB 2.0 port here, which I have a Logitech receiver plugged into. And then you have a USB 3.1 Type-C port, which gives you full 10 gigabit speeds if you have a USB-C dock or if you have a faster hard drive that uses it. You have a lot of options to hook up external hard drives. And so you can hook up something like this little WD My Passport Ultra that I keep, uh, which is almost the size of the mini PC, and add storage that way if you don't have the internal components. Then you also have dual band AC Wi-Fi, gigabit Ethernet, uh, Kensington Lock, the power port, and a 3.5 inch headphone jack or audio out jack if you need it. Pretty little, a nice, pretty adequate little combo here for what you're getting already, but then they also include this handy little remote that works with the IR receiver and Bluetooth built in. And you can see the little IR receiver right on the front next to the nice little power button there. And the remote lets you even turn it off and turn it back on and change settings, control volume, navigate menus if your applications allow it, and so on. Which, that starts to make it an actual media PC, especially if you're hooking it up to a TV. For the media center functionality, I've gone with Plex, of course, a wonderful free media management service that I've talked about Plenty on this channel. Plex organizes your media and keeps a library of media on any drives that you hook up to it. So if, even if you load it up with externals, it will still index and organize and play back all of that media and allows you to watch your media all in one place, which is perfect if you live in you know a small apartment or something like that. I've even got tutorials for ripping your media so that you don't have to switch back and forth with disks or anything like that. Now, this is still a very small and thus low power machine. So you got to have realistic expectations. You won't be transcoding streams to an entire house of users at a time or anything like that. The processor won't keep up with that much work. You need a proper Plex server for that. Although you could use the new Plex cloud server if you feel like paying for cloud storage and just stream it all to here, which is a very nice feature of Plex. But Direct Play through their Windows 10 app works beautifully for any media I loaded onto the external drive, and it's going to perform even better for the internal SSDs. Running Netflix and Hulu gave gave me little trouble, which is nice of an upgrade over their little Access Plus stick I was using before. It was, I was trying to use Chrome too much, and Chrome uses a lot of memory, and that was causing problems. If you already have a Plex server elsewhere in your home, then you can play literally anything on this due to the transcoding capabilities. The Intel HD Graphics 500 here won't let this be a gaming powerhouse or anything like that, but you should still get some basic emulators running on it and stuff like that for sure. The best part about this compared to using a small PC, a laptop, a game console, and so on is that it is fanless. There are no fans here. It is all passive cooling. The case itself acts as a heatsink. There was the heatsink I mentioned for the M.2 SSD. It stays completely silent. 
Uh, the housing can heat up a bit, but never enough to like burn you when you touch it. So cool, especially when you, if you're used to running like an Xbox or something, and especially the Xbox 360 where it's just constant. Whoosh, it's not fun. With realistic expectations, this could actually be the perfect bedroom media PC for a lot of people, and I'm looking forward to the upgrade. Plus, running the HDMI to my LCD TV and the VGA to my HD CRT TV, which are right next to each other in the bedroom, gives me a nice little dual screen setup as well, just for funsies. If you have a grandparent, child, or anyone who just needs basic, super basic computing needs and, a, and only has a small space, this would be pretty good for them too. Product links to the Byte 3 will be in the description below, along with affiliate links for Plexus service down there as well. I'm Apos Fox, here to make tech easier and more fun, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe for more awesome tech content, and I'll see you in the next one. Epos Vox is a Patreon-supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other benefits, go to patreon.com slash eposvox to learn more.